Charlie Vernon book for you. Anyway, a bunch of changes to my equipment. I'm still sick. I did get toasted. It is not COVID. I just had this cold. I think I'm in the tail end of it, but you can probably tell by my voice. Still sick. Um, and my air is not there right now. Just feels awful. Anyway, I got a bunch of new equipment just kind of randomly, and I got to test something that I've not been able to test yet. So first thing, and this is really big, I got a brand new Greg Black ugh, base mouthpiece. Still so shiny. And it might be kind of familiar looking. It is a Greg Black 1G S uh, 0.3, uh, 0.312 number two. So the same specs as my previous two Greg Black base drum mouthpieces, but shallower. It's got a shallower cup. I'm not even sure if I can show this on camera. Here's my other shiny gray black. This is the stock 1G 0.312 number two. And it is just, this is the stock one. This is the new one. I'm not sure if that's really going to come across. You can tell it's just a little shower. And what I'm looking for is a mouthpiece that's like my Lasky 90D. The 90D has the same size rim as my gray blacks, the same size uh, throat, a different backboard, you know, whatever, but it's just shallower. And I've really enjoyed playing it because I get a lot of pitch center out of it. The high range is easier. It's overall just easier to play. I can get more front on the notes. I can get better attacks in kind of all ranges. It's not perfect. The low range is definitely a little cut off. The sound is a little smaller than I would personally prefer, but it's a good mouthpiece. And having played it for a while, the normal Greg Blacks just feel really big and woofy, and the high range feels not good. And so a friend of mine was like, hey, do you see that Greg Black has an option for a, a mouthpiece with the GS cup? And I was like, I'm buying that right now <laughs> because I really, really like my Greg Blacks. I love the rim. I love the way it sounds and the response most of the time. It's just too deep. So I got this literally today, like a couple hours ago and I've been putting in some time. And so far, um, in the initial impressions are very good. It's got a lot of the playability of the Lasky, but it still has the sound of the Greg Blacks. It's very impressive. High range is not as easy as the Lasky. Um, it's not quite as centered as the Lasky, but it's a lot easier to play than the Greg Blacks. The stock Greg Blacks don't work in this horn at all. It just kind of goes to woof zone. High range disappears, response just goes out the window. And on this, this feels really good. Um, even playing Bordoni's as written in the normal octave, it just feels like I'm playing trombone. So very excited about this. I will get to test this in a couple of days on the job. So we'll see if it actually works. I've been playing the 90D there, which does feel pretty good. I want this to feel even better. And of course, I wanted a new mouthpiece because the 90D is missing a bunch of plating on the rim and I really don't wanna get brass poisoning or something. So this is going to get replated, and it's going to be my backup. It might be the main mouthpiece for this. Who knows? Very excited about this new bass mouthpiece. If you were looking at Greg Black stuff and you're kind of wary of how deep they are, which I understand because I have a bunch of really cool mouthpieces that are just a little too deep, this might be a good direction to go. Very excited. I also got another Greg Black in the mail. I've been looking for one of these mouthpieces for like four years. All I want is a stupid Greg Black 3G, 5G. That means it has a 3G rim with a 5G cup. So it's a, just a nice, solid, tenor-sized cup with a rim that I can play. And everybody wants these freaking mouthpieces, so they're never available. Well, I got lucky, and a friend who knows somebody else told me, hey, this guy's selling a bunch of mouthpieces. Here's the list. And this was on the list, and I was like, I'll take it right now please. And so I have here a Greg Black 3G 5G M, so the medium weight. I have like 10 minutes on it. I haven't gotten to play it at all. I've been very busy, even though I'm sick. Um, really excited to try this out because the Grego 1C that I have been using 
it's in here there it is um is really great in some ways the rim is just a little bit too big for me on large tenor and it's kind of wide i don't really like how the rim feels everything else about it is great i just i want something in the three size this is three size it still has a tenor cup it's very manageable i'm very excited to use this another thing for large tenor i got is this shires tv 47 slide which was horrendously cheap like very very cheap this person was legit it was not a stolen slide or anything they just wanted to get rid of it and I'm, I'm not entirely sure why seller if you're watching this i would love to know um it is in immaculate condition i have a shires dual bar baseline that i've only had for three years maybe that long and it's got a bunch of lacquer missing um kind of where you put your hands the grip areas you know like this area um around the water key and stuff and i don't mind that that happens to slides that have thin lacquer. And that is not a big deal for me. This one is immaculate. There is not a spot of missing lacquer on this. There's not a ding. There's nothing. It is in perfect shape. Now, I think he said he sold it because the slide action, the tubes themselves are not great. And he's right. This, I think, I would say this is like a solid seven out of 10. And for a Shire slide, that's pretty bad. My dual bar slide is basically perfect. Um, but I have like a beat up 2042 slide that had, does not have very good action. I can play it and it's good. It does not have good action. And I have a corporation slide that has pretty good action. Um, this is way better than both of those. So I'm very excited to have this cheap slide. It did not come with a lead pipe, but luckily I have exactly one Shires tenor lead pipe that has been sitting around since it was taken out of my contrabass trombone. This used to be the lead pipe that was in the receiver of my contrabass. It is a Shires 3L, not a B3L, just a T3L, the tenor largest uh, lead pipe size long. And I think it was cut down to fit in my contrabass. And it's been there for a long time. I finally got that changed out. And this has just been sitting around. I assumed I was just gonna like throw it away at some point, but guess what? It still fits in a tenor slide and it actually plays pretty well. So kind of magically, I got a free lead pipe and a nearly free slide. This was so cheap. Um, very excited to see how this plays on the 42s. I'm keeping all of my 42 slides until I get my 42 project and I can figure out which one matches best. Um, this might not be it, who knows, maybe I'll sell this. Um, but I'll have three sides to try. Hopefully I can get some more lead pipes to try as well because this is probably not the best match for all playing. And I've already noticed that this has the Shires tenon problem where this is not exactly the same as a Bach tenon and so the bell just goes whoop. I had that problem all the time with my dual bore bass slide. I don't have that problem anymore for some reason because of the new bell section, but still so exciting. Basically just insanely cheap. Uh, TB47 slide. And last of all, I got to finally play my 16M, my 90s one, not the one I just got, which is a corporation, my 90s LT16M. I got to play with other people. I took it to work. I've been playing my 3VF there. And since I'm kind of ingrained with the F attachment now, I was like, I don't know if I want to bring this. And I wasn't really sure if it was going to fit in. And it also doesn't work with my Doug Elliott mouthpiece, which is kind of strange. It really plays very well with, oh, and of course it's put away now, my Bach 4C, which has the four size rim and the C cup, so pretty shallow. And man, it felt great. Like this amazing pitch center, lots of feedback to me. The slide on this instrument is the best slide I've ever used. It is perfect. It just works all the time. Perfect smooth movement all the way up to seventh. It was awesome. It's very light, the instrument itself, even with the counterweight on. The high range is great. I could really blend with the tenor trombones, but still make a fat sound to work with the bass trombone, since I play a third trombone when I play small horn. Um, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. I already like this. Um, I played it a bunch last week, and I was like, oh, I'm keeping this. It's great. Um, but there was a nice affirmation playing it with other people in a real setting, and people were just like, yeah, that sounds great. Um, and it felt really good. I'm not going to use it there because it doesn't have an F attachment and it's not the perfect match. Uh, the 3B really is 
great for that setting. But that really just tells me I want to keep this. I was thinking maybe the intonation is weird enough that I don't want to deal with it. But playing with other people, I like barely even noticed. It's definitely way different than with 3B. I have to, I have to change how I'm thinking about things. The bell's in a different spot. The third partial and fifth partial are totally different than the 3B. But once I adjust and just kind of put my brain into 16 mode, I'm fine. And I kind of thought like, oh no, it's gonna be so weird. I'm not gonna be able to double on it. No, it's great. So really exciting to finally play this with other people and it just worked and sounded great and was so easy to play. And yeah, this was the right choice. I'm gonna keep it, not gonna get rid of it. The other 16M, probably gonna sell it because I don't need to. And this one is magic. That one's good, but it's not magic. Uh, I think that's everything I got. Just kind of randomly got like two Greg Blacks and a slide in the mail in like two days. And I have not had time to really check anything out. So hopefully I'll have more time coming up where I'm not sick and actually can use my air again. And I'll give you some uh, more information. That's it. Bye! -bye.